Man, let's go. This is awesome. I'm so excited about this. Damn. It's so cool that that pinion doesn't change at all. 0.2 degree is nothing. Wow. All right. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Don't listen to me. I'm not sure. All right, well, good morning. Woke up this morning with buggy on the brain. Alarm doesn't go off. The buggy, the buggy on the brain alarm goes off. I was thinking about all kinds of different things on this this morning. So in the last episode, we got motor mounts mocked up and put in. Pulled the engine and transmission out. Cleaned things up slid the chassis forward so that I could reattach the front links and uh, put this front axle at full bump, full droop, and check for clearances. At this point, where we're at with this right now is I've got 50 degree of steering, which is exactly what I wanted. We're gonna internal, internally limit the steering ram, so I've only got about 45 or so, because I wanna make sure U-joints and the axle shafts are happy. The other thing we figured out, which is something we already knew already, was that we're going to have to raise these upper link mounts a little bit because we have a interference and a clearance issue with this yoke on the high pinion here. It's hitting the it's hitting the upper link. Now, mind you, I think I've mentioned this before, but this is a fourteen ten yoke. And I'm not planning on running a 1410 U-joint. I'm planning on running a 1350 U-joint, which is smaller. However, if I can make sure that it'll clear the, uh, the 1410, then we're good. We know we're good. we got plenty of clearance. And if in the future, if I should decide to run a 1410 yoke or if for some reason I need it, it's already there. we got plenty of room. The other thing I need to do is throw the drive shaft in. I've got a mock-up drive shaft made up. The mock-up drive shaft is a three inch tube. I'm planning on building two and a half inch uh, drive shaft main tubes for these. So if I can clear, again, if I can clear the three inch tube, I know I got plenty of room for the two and a half. I also, for reference, even though it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt because I already disconnected the rear axle and everything, I need to connect the rear axle up again and put it at full bump and make sure that I'm somewhat equal in bump front to rear as far as up travel. It's pretty common to have more up travel in the rear just because of packaging. You don't have a you don't have an engine and uh, things to worry about in in the rear. However, I want to make sure that I'm I'm pretty equal as far as the ratio is concerned. I don't want to have way more bump in the rear than I do in the front. I want to try to keep things pretty pretty equal. However, I think at this point, the amount of bump I have in the front, even though it's interfering, I think I'm I think at this point I'm pretty close to being higher than the rear as far as the bump is. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that axle in here real quick just to make sure. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to set up the camera so you can watch me run through and put this rear axle in so I can start analyzing that bump, check out our ratios. And then uh, from there, I'm going to go ahead and start working on these upper link mounts on this front axle. The upper link mounts are all temporary. So what we're planning on doing or what I'm planning on doing after I get this upper link mount sort of solidified as far as height is concerned, I'm going to put a small truss on here 
going to come down. Truss will be about the level of the top of the pumpkin, come down, and then down here, upper link mount on top of the truss, upper link mount on top of this pumpkin or center section, and then a steering ram mount off the front of the truss here. The other thing I'm planning on doing is building fabricated high steer arms because in my opinion, for what I want to do, these are not high enough and we need to have, I need to have the hind joint for the steering link up here in double shear. So there's got to be, you know, there's got to be a plate here and then a plate over the top. There's a couple of kits out there I can buy to replace these stock steering arms or I can fabricate my own. I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do there. I might fabricate my own. I don't know. It's it's a it's a time versus versus cost savings. So so that's what we're going to do. Here we go. All right, well, we got the rear axle, or I got the rear axle put in place, and I got a laser level going across the entire side of the chassis. And the way this thing sits right now, the front uh, axle is uh, an inch higher. So full bump at the rear is an inch lower than the front axle currently is, which, um, I'll drop this thing down. That might be just the just the height I needed to clear. Well, I, I'm pretty sure it would be the height I needed to clear this 1410 yoke. I may not have to do anything with these upper link mounts. I am going to still uh, strap or bolt another ti another tire and wheel package. I think the tires and wheels. I think the wheels that I have on. The four seater, the rock crawler buggy, I think the wheels have a different backspacing to them. I believe these wheels and tires are only a three and a half inch backspacing, and I would like to run something with a deeper, a deeper offset, more like a four and a half inch backspace. So I want to try that out before, you know, before I say that this link height is acceptable and is going to work. I also need to throw that uh, drive shaft in there, but it's pretty, it's pretty amazing that this is um, an inch taller than the rear at full bump. Now, there's a couple of caveats to that. I don't have the front of the frame rails finished, but I can build, I can build around this front axle. That's why I didn't finish the front frame rails. And obviously, the drive shaft isn't in there yet. So, just need to make sure. It's a whole bunch of checking and figuring, standing back and looking. This is a lot of the stuff that you just don't see watching people fabricate and do stuff, especially on television. You're doing a lot of standing back and looking and figuring and thinking and trying to plan five, six, seven, ten steps ahead. So, anyway, here we go. All right, so we got bump leveled out. We're, we're plumb level on uh, full up travel, both front and rear. And we're still not clearing this yoke. I think we probably need a half inch or better. So the other thing I need to consider too is pinion dive. Uh, when I drooped this, I was, I was noticing this the other day or yesterday when I when I had this axle on the on the ground or tires at ride height, whatever you want to call it, the pinion was drooping a little bit. It was it was diving a little bit. So that means this upper link needs to be a little bit longer. And making that upper link longer 
is just going to raise that yolk up more. It's going to elevate like the, the yolk. So I need to cycle that suspension and take a look at that as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and make a, a taller mount for this upper link mount. See how that does. And then from there, I'm going to cycle the suspension again, check uh, tire clearances and everything. Tire should be good to go, but I do need to strap up that other wheel, make sure I've got plenty of clearance and then we'll go from there. All right, here we go. Well, <clears throat> this whole thing's about adapt and overcome. Putting out little pliers as they come up. So I set up uh, a new mock-up upper link mount here. These are at uh, three quarters of an inch taller than the last one. I just barely have enough room for the 1410 yoke here to spin. The caveat to that is if I roll up the if I roll up the pinion any more than it already is, it hits. So I went ahead and made an opposite side over here. Now this one and this one are obviously not the same level. So I'm gonna go ahead and mock up another link mount on this side that's the same level as this one here. And then after I get that done, then I'm gonna start cycling suspension and making sure everything's happy. I wanna see what the pinion does when I droop it out. I have a feeling it's gonna dive. If it does dive, what I need to do is shorten up the lowers a little bit. I think that's my inclination. And that's pretty simple to do at this phase. Um, I can shorten the lowers a little bit and just make sure that the pinion doesn't dive. The other thing I can do is I can move. No, I can't. I can't do that. So anyway, we got still got plenty of room in our little window here. I can also move these links inward a little bit if I have to. I can't necessarily go outward anymore at the chat or at the axle side, but I could go inward, make things a little bit more triangulated up here. And if I did that, I might miss that yoke altogether and I could still roll the pinion up if I need to. So, um, yeah, so that's where we're at. I have a feeling that if I don't make these even, it's going to give me some weird characteristics when I cycle the suspension. So I'm going to go ahead and make these even here and check that out and then uh, go from there. All right, here we go. We got these other temporary link mounts over here done. Man, that thing towers up high. When Kevin was telling me these things needed to be 10 inches off axle center line, he wasn't he wasn't lying. That new link mount over there is seven and a half inches from the top of the axle tube. The axle tube's three and a half inches in diameter, so do the math on that. Damn, those things are high. However, uh We'll have a truss there. It'll all look like it's meant to be when I get that truss done. We'll have the link mounts up on top of that truss. It'll be good. So, man, let's go. This is awesome. 
I'm so excited about this. Now, I'm going to start articulating this thing. I am going to first measure the amount of pinion dive I have. Uh, the higher these links go up, the shorter they get. So, I'm going to have to probably, if I'm thinking correctly, make these upper links a little longer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Don't listen to me. I'm not sure. We're going to find out soon enough. I'm going to droop this thing down. I'm going to check backspacing on these wheels. I'm going to probably take another a tire and wheel off the, the four-seat buggy. Check the back, backspacing on those, which I think is uh, a bit more, hopefully. Because I want to see what this uh, articulation does with a with a deeper backspace. So I don't really understand backspace versus offset. I, I mean, I understand what backspace means, but I don't understand offset. I don't understand why they got to have two, two different uh, terms for what I think is the same thing. I don't know. All right, here we go. I got uh, passenger side drooped out as much as I can with the tire on it. So far, so good. We're doing all right. No, no interference here. So I'm gonna jack that up a little more. I'm gonna take that tire off. And I'm gonna droop it out some more. Flexed out to about the max I can do with the chassis table. I could probably go a little bit lower, but it's trying to pull the whole chassis off the off the table. So I need to leave it there. But yeah, I mean, I'm I'm down over here about as far as I can go, and I still have still have plenty of room. Rotate that yoke. So good to go. Onward. All right, well, as you can see in the video, I wouldn't recommend doing this this way. If you can put your chassis on a lift and lift the chassis rather than having to lift the axles up and down, it's a lot less sketchy, but don't try this at home. There's my disclaimer. So pinion did not change one bit. Well, it did change one bit. It changed 0.2 degree. So at full bump, we were at 1.5. Full droop, we're at 1.7. 0.2 degree pinion angle change from full bump to the point where I have it here drooped. I believe we'll call that a win. I'll take that. I like that. Now, the other thing is figuring out if that tire is ever going to be drooped out that much. I won't really know until I actually flex it out with tires on it. So I've got to have a tire on the ground shocks and a tire up in the air so maybe i'm overthinking that thinking out loud here folks this is what i do when i'm not on the camera i'm by myself this is usually what i'm doing thinking in my head so if i have a tire bolted up here this side of the axle is going to be a little bit taller i lift up that end yeah i lift up that end i don't think we're going to have to worry about drive shaft bind because that tire, or because that axle is never going to achieve that much droop. We're not going to have that much travel in the shock. And we're definitely not going to have that much travel in the limit strap. So, I think maybe I've done as much as I can do here. Yeah, I think, I, I think I've done as much as I can do here to do my research, do my homework, and make sure this setup is going to work. I believe so. Just to know the pinion doesn't change that much is exceptional yeah thinking out loud thinking out loud man it's the name of the game this is uh, a lot going on but i think we're good i think we're good now the next step is going to be shocks mock up mocking up shocks mocking up limit straps and making sure shocks are happy with the amount of droop Drive lane angles, I'm happy with the mountain of droop. I don't see, I don't foresee that being a problem. This thing shouldn't have that much travel, but not with a 14, 16 inch shock on it. So 
Anyway, I think I think that's going to work. Damn. It's so cool that that pinion doesn't change at all. <laughs> 0.2 degree is nothing. Wow. All right. Here we go. Well, all right, we've got chassis spun around. I think I got some of that on the time lapse. Got the rear axle at full droop. And uh, I'm gonna measure pinion angle on this axle from full droop to full bump, see what happens. Anyway, I've got stuff I got going on this afternoon, so I'm gonna have to call it a day on this. Made lots of progress, answered a lot of questions on the front end. Really excited to see how the rear end reacts to for uh, pinion angle. I'm gonna bolt up a tire, check a uh, full droop, full bump, and then after I get that done, I'm disconnect that axle again, finish out the front end, get this thing off the chassis table, and keep on going. All right, please like, subscribe, share. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time.